If you clicked on this video because you don't want to spend every waking moment of your already dull life studying, well then you're in the right place. Because honestly, that used to be me in school until I realized that I don't want to be sat in my desk flicking through some textbook 12 hours a day. And so I started to use this one technique that quadrupled, no, centupled my learning speed or something to that effect. Introducing the black boxing method. Full disclosure, I found this on the internet like two days ago. But it's really good because it finally puts a name to the way I've learned to study over time, really study those complex things in a very quick way. So let's go through it. And yes, this applies to all the physics, maths, logic-based subjects too. I go through a full example, so stick through through the end. The blueprint for black boxing. As you can see, this is a black box. But what you need to do is imagine that this box contains a very unknown, complicated topic or process. And that we have absolutely no idea how it works or why it works, but we do know its inputs and its outputs. We know that whatever is in this black box, the problem or complicated process starts with something and then something comes out at the end. We just don't know its internal workings. We don't know what happens in there. And that's how learning any topic starts too, right? Except what happens usually is that people just pick up these inputs and start barging through that box without knowing overall what's happening. Without actually thinking about the inputs, the outputs, how they relate to each other, why this process or topic even exists, without thinking about the adjacent concepts or boxes. People just get lazy and then impatient and start reading line by line, going through this topic in a linear way hoping that they could eventually piece it together, which takes so much longer. And I can't even blame anyone. It's what I did. It's what we're taught to do. But very intuitively, I just started to get really annoyed at myself when I started to spend ages on things. And the solution to getting through the topic quicker in my head intuitively was just to get the bigger picture from the start. What the hell is happening in this topic overall? And why am I getting confused when I'm reading on line three? And so the first step when doing a topic in the most basic sense is to spend 15 minutes simplifying the overall topic into what the inputs and the outputs are. What is generally happening? Who are all the essential characters to the story in this black box unknown topic or process? For example, if we're learning about acute kidney disease, a very complicated disease with a lot of pathways, the input would be all the causes of the AKI and the output would be all the ways that the kidneys and the bodies then get damaged. We don't know how the causes lead to the damage. That's in the black box. And instead of just reading, oh, acute kidney injury is a sudden decrease in function enough. No, we simplify the whole thing and then think, okay, what are the actual causes? Blood loss, heart failure, drugs, ATN, urinary calculi, all these bad things that can cause this disease. And then we can focus on understanding the outputs, dehydration, confusion, less urine, a lot of serious problems. Now wait, that is a lot of inputs, that's a lot of outputs, which by the way, is how it is going to be for most even medium difficulty topics. So our step two is to categorize as much of the information from these inputs and outputs as we can. And by the way, by this point, to understand what generally happens in the process, you should have done some reading around the inputs and outputs and around the general process as well. So try and find some mental model, some structure, and some way to link all these different inputs and different outputs together. For our topic, we can split all the causes of acute kidney injury into pre-renal, stuff not getting to the kidneys, renal, stuff happening in the kidneys, and post-renal, stuff not leaving the kidneys. And boom, once we've categorized the causes into these three things, everything becomes much easier to understand. By the way, I'd also aim to categorize even more, try and categorize the types of causes, even by the cell types as well, that might make it easier for you to remember. Keep in mind, we don't actually know the specifics of what happened happens yet with each of the causes and how they lead to those outcomes in this disease. But if we're given an exam question, we can immediately use our logic, use our brain, and then hazard a guess. Even if we don't know exactly what happens, we can read through a bit of the topic and link the causes somewhat because we've categorized them to the effects that they have. And you can do all of this only within 10 to 15 minutes of going through a topic. And by the way, me explaining AKIs to you a little bit right now has given you a good idea of what they are, which would have taken me way longer if we started to read through the causes and what it is one by one. Remember, big picture. But now it's finally time to slowly dive in. Step three is now opening the box and revealing the things in it, slowly, gradually diving into the details. Now, obviously, you should take in the knowledge in layers, reading about the concepts generally first and then diving into the details. If you get confused about any of the details, it's because you don't understand the general concepts well enough. But what I've been doing recently, something that is really helpful with remembering all of these co complicated processes and things, is that when I'm going through a topic, I'm creating a visual, vivid story in my head. For a specific kidney disease, for example, gradually unveil the causes one by one and create a vivid story in your head of how the kidney stones end up there or how your prostate becomes so big that it starts pressing on your urine tubes. And then both of these could cause your pee to back up into your kidneys. And then you think, okay, that's bad. What would that cause? And how would I then solve it treatment wise? Once you visualize it, it's common sense. You'd obviously try and break that blockage or drain all that excess fluid. It's 3D vivid in your head. And that's the point. That is what actually 
actually is gonna get, help you learn and remember the info for much longer. But regardless, overall, you're just peeling back the layers, except each detail that you read will be much, much easier to understand. And it'll link in with your knowledge very quickly because you did that initial black boxing first. How it applies to maths and physics. Instead of being selfish and only applying this to a medicine thing, I'm also going to try and apply this to a basic projectile motion kinematics equation for physics. The inputs with most projectile motion problems are the maximum height, the range through which the object travels, and the overall time of flight as well. And the outputs in my head are these list of variables and equations that we can pretty much use to solve any projectile motion problem. The quick way of understanding projectile motion would be to see how these inputs relate with each other in a conceptual way and then understand how the equations and the specific variables in them also work. Break down the equations and understand them before you dive into that black box. Without diving straight into some projectile motion problem or an example, slowly see, yeah, okay, to solve any 2D projectile motion problem, all I need to do is one, to calculate the vertical component, which involves finding the maximum height and the time of flight, and then the horizontal component, which basically involves finding the range. Then you try and understand, okay, which of these equations would be most likely to be involved in finding each of these components. You've already broken down the problem and you're now relating it back to the inputs. Then the next step is to try out a problem, probably flop at it or get it semi-correct. Then you read through examples and properly understand exactly where you went wrong. And then you try again and you repeat this process. If you're getting them right, then keep trying different types of problems that I guess assess for different variables. By the way, I don't know if I got the specific way of working out projectile motions right. I did physics like four years ago, but you get the general technique. The big mistake that you need to avoid. Yes, even though black boxing helps you logically speed your way through the basics well enough so that you can now tackle difficult questions. A big mistake that people, including me, make is that we take this 80-20 rule too literally. We become too overconfident because this technique is so good that we just feel like we understand a topic just by going through the inputs and outputs and seeing what how they relate. And because this gives us this illusion of understanding, the mistake we make is not reading deeper into the details. And for the logical subjects, this means not knowing the concept well enough or not practicing the harder questions. That isn't great for most subjects, but especially the ones where you have to apply your knowledge. A lot of us students just start applying our knowledge based on unfounded intuition, especially in medicine. We do not have enough experience to be intuitive when diagnosing a patient. Or for maths, physics students, you don't have that intuition when solving or proving theorems. You need to be logical with your approach so you can diagnose correctly, so you can understand the concepts correctly. And that cannot happen without you taking the time to learn deeply, rather than just learning the basics and guesstimating. And that's it with the method. I really didn't want to make this video too long because it, at the end of the day, it is a simple, really solid way of thinking when you're learning a new topic. These are the inputs, these are the outputs, and there's this unknown process, difficult details in this black box that connects them to. We know what is going on, but we don't know why or how any of it happens. So the best solution is to start by ignoring it and focus on our intuitive understanding, try and categorize the inputs, try and categorize the outputs there, categorize as much as possible, and only then peek into the black box. Understand the things in layers, get through each of the variables and each of the steps in the process gradually. And you'll see that the information as you read after doing this black boxing will just start connecting so much faster. This was just a quick technique for learning information, but for a full deep dive, a 37 minute long guide on memorizing information, check this video out right here. I just released it a few days ago and it goes through every exact step that you need to take to memorize and ingrain information that you need to learn. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this has helped. Leave a like, spam the comments, help me out with the algorithm, and I will see you in the next one.